an alien invasion. Is it biblical? Of course it is. Clearly I'm not here today as a fact witness. You can Google it. I think you just use the Bible, do whatever the hell you like. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome to Mystery Battle Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Hegg. With me, my lovely assistant, to Rob Van Hoff. What's up, Rob? As you can see, I'm too lazy to go downstairs and get my earbuds, so now I'm wearing these huge, giant cans on the side of my head. That's they okay. look great. It reminds Thank me of you. Princess Leia. Oh, yes. Old, right. old Princess Leia. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Anyway, okay, we're going to jump in because this is actually a really long video. Now, today our audience is going to learn why we try to get videos three minutes and under. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Here, but you know, those who really love us, you know, in spite of all our sti- wacky doodness, yeah, they, they're going to sit with it. They will bear with us. They will stick with it. Right because here. that's what true love does. They bears all things. That's right. Right. All right. Um, so if you have a video that is three minutes or under or somewhere around there, we can clip things, make them five minutes or less. And, and granted, this is five minutes or less. Um, so if you have a video that's five minutes or less, <laughs> see how you get to com. I just wondered, if, are we ever going to do a marathon, Rob and Caleb marathon, like like an eight hour show or like 24 hour show? That like, sounds absolutely awful. No a one wants to. Twenty-four hour live stream. Nobody wants to hear us for that. <laughs> nobody wants to hear us for that. Dude, I'll tell you what. My we we were we'll do having, it as a fundraiser. We were having like, our, <laughs> we were having our Shabbat group uh, on Saturday, and and um, so, like, Keisha was like, "Yeah, what I hear is really good at his show." And somebody was like, "Oh, it, oh one of my kids was like, let's put it on now." <laughs> and my wife was like, uh, "I was like, no, definitely not. I don't want to hear myself." And they were like, "Why not?" It's, uh, anyway, yeah, I, de- I'm good on all of that. Okay. No, I hear. I hear. Let's, I hear <laughs> let's, uh, we're going to jump it now. Okay. First of all, there needs to be some, there needs to be some uh, disclaimers on this. Number one, this person is not a scholar. I, bl- I don't believe this person is a scholar. I don't believe this person is a teacher. I believe this person is a passionate believer who uh, has teachers that should probably be reprimanded. I don't know where she's getting this. Her teacher might be the internet. Who knows? I don't know. And I don't want to make any assumptions. So this is not a dig on this person. That's number one. Number two, um, her, I, I, it was hard to do. I tried to do a little bit of research, but it, it looks like this is just a mom. A mom who is uh, a believer and passionate about what she's talking about. Um, however, I think that there this to me, this highlights some of the confusion uh, that is happening in the, the modern day church. Uh, and some of the, what I would consider to be errant teaching, but also I think it shows a lack of understanding of what a covenant is and a, what a covenant relationship is. And um, yeah, so uh, Rob's not going to be able to see this. He's only going to be able to hear this. So because of that, I'm going to describe this. All you're seeing is this lady's face inside of, she's obviously bundled up for the winter. She's got, you know, a nice big jacket around her. And she has put on the screen right under her face uh, something that says, hang on, let me look, Torah followers with fire on both sides. Torah followers. Okay, so that's who she's speaking to. This video is four minutes long. Uh, We don't have to get to the whole video. However, there is some nuggets in here about halfway that I think are worthy of talking about. So what we'll do is we'll get, unlike normal videos where we'll try to listen to them the whole way through and then go back and and go piece by piece, we're just going to go piece by piece through this because otherwise we're going to be here for hours. In other words, we're putting it... Uh, right into the shredder. That's like, right. Yes, like, exa- exactly. Like, uh, <laughs> Directly in. Here we go. Um, so, and and I'm I do apologize to this young lady and uh, to any of her followers. I, I I don't remember her handle, and normally I try to grab the handle. Unfortunately, it's not on her video. It's something like something, Mama. Like, uh, some yeah, like uh, if this is yours, just yeah, just let our, us uh, just let yeah, call, call our, our comment line. Our all comment right, line. so let's go ahead and take a listen to this young lady. This is for all you Torah loving people. Do you know what Jesus did? Because if you did, you would not be going back to follow the Torah. 
you don't even know who Jesus is. When Jesus came in the flesh, it was God becoming flesh. It says the word was made flesh so that he could die. You don't understand what that means. You do not understand. God, okay, the word part of the Godhead, it became flesh so that he could actually die. Because you're right, spirits don't, they can't die. Spirits can't die. But because how he did what he did, he was the only perfect sacrifice because he was God in the flesh. Okay, so let's pause real quick because Rob can't see what's coming up on on the screen. Now she's clarifying some of her words here because she and and it's obvious that she's clarifying because she is trying to uh, be extremely trinitarian. So it says fully God, not just the Son, but he was the Word, the Father, the Spirit, all uh dwelling, manifesting, coming and being made flesh. Okay. So I, I applaud her on trying to maintain a, a strong, um, uh, a high deity for Christ, and I applaud her on trying to clarify her words for, uh, for, for being Trinitarian. That's great. Now, with that said, uh, I, I'm not, like, so far the idea of God coming in flesh, I actually, okay, I'm not sure why she thinks that that would discount the covenant. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it seems like where she's going, I mean, there's more, and I have never what? heard this before, but it sounds like the trajectory of her thought, like where she's leading the listener is the Old Testament needed sacrifices, and but none of them were perfect. And so when Christ came to die, he is the perfect sacrifice and therefore fulfilling, meaning showing the weakness of the Old Testament and how we are never to go back there. And so for people to go back there, they are not recognizing the incarnation, the right. value of the so, so I think that this... That, that, but that's just me. You know, I don't so, know. so I don't think she's actually going to get that deep into it. However... What I will say is, if that is a belief that you have, anyone who's watching this, this show it shows to, to me a misunderstanding of the sacrificial system, right. right? We've talked about this numerous times. The, the sacrifices never saved anyone. They never covered the sins. They never took away sins. They never paid for the sins of anyone. And so for a person to say, well, those were a shadow, but the real one has actually come. Now, granted, they are a shadow, right? The, the sacrificial system is a, is a shadow of what Christ would do. However, to say, now that we have the real one, we don't need the old ones, implies, implies that the old ones actually took away sins, which the scriptures say they never did. Okay, we're going to keep listening because it gets, it gets even better. Trust me. Here we go. In order for himself to die. I, by the way, we'll, we'll rewind this just a little bit so we can get what she's saying here. By the way, I am 99.9% .9 confident that she added the music. Really, really poor choice in music. Anyway, let's roll back here a little bit so we get a sense of what she's saying about Christ needing to die. Just from a production value yeah, perspective. Just from a production, just from a video editing perspective, choose better music next time. Because he was God in the flesh in order for himself to die in the flesh. That God of the Old Testament who gave the commandments written with his finger, that God who gave Moses the law of Moses, that same God is the one who died. And so that old covenant is, not, is no longer standing. Because now we're married to a new man. Okay, because oh. he wasn't just God. He was God and a human all in one so that we could be married to a new being, Jesus Christ. Okay, let's let's pause. Romans 7. Right, she, yeah. She has a reading of Romans 7. <laughs> right? I mean, am I right? 
Yeah, the sniff test and the lie detector determined. So here's the thing is that uh, there is just so much wrong with this. They, the, there is this teaching going around, and, and it's very prevalent in the Hebrew Roots movement, and I would even say in the Messianic movement, but it's 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 found its way into Christianity too. And, and, the, and here is the teaching. It, it is the notion that um, God was married to Israel. Israel then breaks the covenant. And God wants to remarry Israel, okay? So well, no, but God divorces Israel, right? God divorces yeah. Israel, and then God wants to remarry Israel, but you can't. But according to this, to to this errant teaching, a person can't remarry someone that they've divorced. This By his is own not, law, yeah, this, Deuteronomy, right? Well, but this is not true. This is not the law. The law actually says that you can't remarry if that person goes and marries another, and then the second husband divorces her. She can't go back then to the first husband right, and right. get married again. Israel never went and married another. They, they, that never happened. So, so they're taking this law completely out of context. But according to such errant theology, then what has to happen is Christ, ha like God, has to come in flesh and actually die, so that that law is no longer to, right, applied. To, it's like a legal. There's a legal loophole, right? That if <laughs> the husband dies, she's freed, and then he comes back again as a new person. He's like a new husband. He's I, not the same husband as the old husband. I've had people get very upset at me. Oh, and and like uh, like avid listeners to this show get very upset at me saying, no, 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 you're totally wrong. This is this is found in the Bible. And then, of course, they try to, to show it from the Bible, which they can't. Well, Jeremiah. I mean, there's there's uh, is it Jeremiah chapter three. Not, there's look, places I'm, people go. I'm not saying there aren't elements that people are going to point to to say, see, look, God gave Israel a certificate of divorce. See, look, God came and had to die. See, look at this law. It's that a divorced person can't marry another, but they're wrong on that. They, they they never go through the whole law. Anyway, the point is, is that this is not the theology that that this is not correct theology. This is not why Yeshua came to die. It's just not. Uh, the biblical text talks about atonement and the fact that there has to be a life given for the, the for payment of sin. This is taught from the very beginning of Genesis, right? On the day you eat of it, you will surely die. So this has nothing to do with some law in Torah about somebody divorcing another person. This is this is nonsense. It's just not. It's just not how it's how how the Bible talks. Anyway, she. It seems like she is. But she, another thing that she does is she talks about being married to a covenant. The, and I think one of the things that is, is sorely missed here is that the New Covenant stipulations is the law of Moses written on the heart. She thinks that the two covenants are totally separate, and I think that this is another major misstep of, of mainstream Christianity, is that the New Covenant is completely separate and different from the law of Moses. She uses the term Old Covenant, which I think is, is a misstep in, in and of itself. But the, the, the idea that uh, these two covenants are totally separate and not, never the two shall meet is absolutely uh, devoid of, of biblical truth. Jeremiah specifically tells us that the law of Moses is written on the heart. It is the stipulations of the new covenant. Shall we keep going? Yeah. God in the flesh and also human. And so that new covenant is now the one standing. So you cannot be married to the old covenant and the new covenant because you're married to two different people. Let that sink in. It says two different beings. She put up on the thing two different beings. The, two different the, beings. Yeah. So I don't understand. Well, I, she's trying real hard to be Trinitarian here, but at the same time, I, I, I hate to tell you this, you're really getting into Marcionism. Marcionism. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Marcion, Old Testament God, New bad. Tes yeah. New, New Testament, Testament God, God good. good. Exactly. And, and I mean, uh, uh, she might not want to say it that <clears throat> bluntly, but... That's the categorization she set up. She's talking out of two sides of her mouth here, and and once again, I you know I'm going to give her a lot of grace on this because I don't think she's a theologian. I don't think that she's a you yeah. Know, that's a clear. I think that's but clear. but she's talking out of two sides of her mouth here because she says that the that the God who who uh, wrote the Torah with his finger is the same God who came in the flesh. Now I'm I'm in total agreement here. We are in total agreement in that. 
However, to say that you, that uh, you're married, and then to, she's saying they're two beings. I don't understand. They're that. two beings, and that that uh, if you're if you're part of the what she calls the old covenant, we're going to call it the law of Moses. Then you're married to a different being than the new covenant. This is a complete contradiction of what she said earlier. It's a complete contradiction. Now, once again, I want to give her grace in this. However, I'm hoping that if you're watching this and you agree with some of what this lady's saying, or if you if you think that if this is reson- what she's saying is resonating with you, I'm here to tell you you have missed some key factors in theology. You need to go back to and the worst part is is that this young lady. She's not getting this on her own. She's not getting this from reading the Bible. She's getting this from teachers. So her teachers are the oh, R totally. at fault yeah. here. Exactly. She this is not rooted and grounded in from her own right. immersion in the word and a and a a long walk with the Lord. You know, I, I'm just not hearing that. Um not that she hasn't had a long walk with the Lord. What I'm saying is, is that there are influences that are coming in, probably pastors, probably teachers, but possibly just internet, tro- you know, internet uh, surfing. Who knows what they are? The point is that she has she has globbed onto a theology that is is errant. It's not correct. Let's keep going. And so, if you want to be under the old covenant, you're free to do that. Let's stop real quick. Pause, and the and the reason why is because I am now like ninety per ninety five percent convinced that the that the term under the law, which she is attempting to to reference here, I don't think does it ever use under the covenant. I don't think that's I don't I don't think that that's used by Paul, and I think that's who she's trying to reference. Yeah. However, under the law is equated with under the curse of the law, which is used in, in Galatians, right? He uses yeah, this the, in Galatians the, the, 3. The fact that we were under a death penalty does not come from the blessings side of the Torah, of the covenant. It comes from our transgressions. Right. The commandments, the it's the, the endurance, the persistence of the commandments is the strength of the sin conviction. In other words, if if God did away with the commandments, there would be no more charges against us. Right. But that's not what God did. We had to die. We died with Messiah on the cross. And what does that mean? It means that our it is no longer I who live, but Christ we who lives owed in me. Right. because of the sin was paid. Right. And because we're attached to him through death into his resurrection, we then by his grace, not by our works, we have access to and and are attached to him the blessings of the of the covenant. There's and we've talked about this so many times, like the Babylonian uh, uh, captivity is a perfect picture for us of of you'd say, oh well, the temple was destroyed. Oh, the law was done away. Jeremiah already gave the news, right? Jeremiah was prophesied about this Brit Hadashah, this new covenant, when the Solomon's temple was still standing. So the idea of like, oh, well, it must have been done away because look, you know, but no, we know, we know Ezekiel, we know Daniel, but also it says that the the land will have her Sabbath rests. Well, why does God care about Sabbath rest through the Babylonian exile? There's no Levitical priesthood in operation. Right. There's no even temple standing, but God is still counting Sabbaths. What's that all about? You know? So yeah, it's, it's, it does sound like she's uh, not. Yeah. I, I think you're right. She's just taking with what she's been taught and just trying to amplify here's, it or, here's or th- repeat it in her own words. Here's the thing is that even the uh even the the Hebrew rooter in the cage stage is going to be able to uh to to find the significant I mean, you know, we come against the Hebrew roots a lot because there is errant theology within the Hebrew roots movement. However, the average person who has done their homework enough to come to a belief that the Torah is enacted today, even if they have errant theology in other areas, they are going to be able to tear this apart because at least they have the truth of at least they are putting the covenants in the in the right place, right? Uh, when you try to uh, take, you know, it's like the Duplo Legos. As soon as you try to take those Duplo Legos apart, though, they're just they're all over the place. They're scattered all over my house, and I step on them, right? 
they're not they're not a structure anymore. All right, let's let's keep going. She's two minutes in. We have two minutes left. I don't think we're gonna make it the whole way. Let's just see if she says anything else a little wackadoo in the next minute or so. But there is a new covenant and a better covenant, and that's called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. That is the new covenant. God Okay, hang on. I think I think what she's getting at, I'm gonna give her grace on this. I think what she means is the Torah is written on the heart by the Holy Spirit because she's going to reference uh, Romans 8. She says Ephesians in the beginning, but then she then she moves to Romans 8, and I think this is actually what she's talking so about. There, so in other words, there's a disc, the Old Testament people didn't have this. Apparently didn't, not. Didn't have the Holy Spirit. Apparently not. So that means they didn't have faith. Right. Because, which means Hebrews 11, you have to get rid of Hebrews 11. And 8. Yeah, and, going. All right. and Romans 8, right? Right, right, right. Coming into inside of us, his spirit inside of us, the spirit of the Father, that's what it says Ephesians, in Ephesians, and the spirit of Christ is in us. And so we now can walk with God like it was back in the garden where he now talks to us, he walks with us, he communes with us, he's intimate with us. That is literally the whole purpose of him dying so that he could okay hang on just a sec she puts something up on here she says not she put this up over her face not the only purpose but definitely a big one him dying for us was for the forgiveness of sin as well as to make the old covenant null and void to bring forth a new covenant a better one. Here's the thing is that, I, I mean, she ha she's going to have major, 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 major issues with things like Moses and with if God, David. If, if God came in the flesh to nullify the Torah he gave to Moses, that does not handle the sin problem. All that does is you have a bunch of murderers and rapists and adulterers in the courtroom in front of the judge, and he's looking at the law, and he's looking at them, and he's looking at the law, and he's like, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, laws done away with. That, that, yeah, yeah. That's it's 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 harsh and it's frustrating. But it it is a there's a sense of, I think she would think that she's very literate in the Bible. Like she oh, has a yeah. high literacy of the gospel, and she's passionately, like you were saying at the beginning, she wants to convey other people to lift biblical literacy of who Jesus is, but. Man, it's it's illiterate. I, I and I don't mean that like to be mean. I'm just saying it's not, in my view, it's not a literate grasp of the gravity of what the you know the gospel message and what issue was done. Well, ultimately, I, I think I, I think that she is making. I now I want to be careful because I want to be. I, I don't want to to assume her theology. However, it really seems to me like what she is getting at is there is a the gospel message begins either in Acts two when the Spirit is given to the apostles, or maybe before when Christ dies and rises and 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 ascends into heaven. This is when the gospel message begins. Before that, people were under a different law, a different covenant. But the, the, then the obvious question, the obvious question that comes in, and I think that this is a question that, that anyone would have to ask her. I, I mean, the guys over at like Ligonier, MacArthur, all these guys, Piper, they get it. The idea that you weren't saved differently before Christ came. It seems to me like what she is getting at is that this was not the case. In fact, these people were saved under a different covenant in a different way. And now that Christ has died and rose from the, the grave, we're saved by faith and by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. This is this is errant theology to a, a place that has nothing to do with Torah followers. In fact, even mainstream Protestants have understood that this is a major, major issue and that this cannot be according to the biblical text. So she's not even in, like in step and in line with, with uh, standard Christian doctrine at this point, if that's what she's uh, proposing, that there was a difference in the way that a person was saved before Christ died and, and in the way after. Let's keep going. And, and would you say, real, real Go quick, ahead. Yeah. would you say that, that in, the, in this theology, if, if this however we're imagining her worldview, that there's no place for a, a genuine born-again believer to 
walk in the Torah of Moses no, without I, mis- without misunderstanding her point? Like, would would there could there be an observant believer that she goes, okay, you have good theology? I guess it's I well. Here's the thing: is that is that I I would assume normally yes. However, she's already said that if you are keeping the Torah, if you're if you're then you, then you don't know who Jesus is. You're married to a different. You're married to someone yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. You're not so married I, to Christ. I get that answers the question. She, I don't think it's that's uh, not an option in her. Right, you, she doesn't you, have a category for that. There you're is not, no, she you would can't say there's saved. no category. You can't be saved if you're married to the God of the Old Testament, and even though he's right. the same as Jesus, it, like the, once again, we're getting into some real like confusion here because she's affirming that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. It's the same exact God. He just came in the flesh. But then, if you're under the Torah, then you're then you're married to the God of the Old Testament, and not the God of the New Testament. Uh, like it's, it's very, uh, I honestly, she's confused. And I, and I think that she hasn't realized her confusion. He could go back to how it was in the garden where he could walk and talk and be with us. Like Moses and David. So Enoch, all Noah, um, all the people under the quote unquote old covenant, right? Like <laughs> what, what are you Joshua, talking about? He says, I will be with you. That's what he tells Joshua going right. in after Moses dies. That's. Right. Right. Okay. Hang wow. on. We're we're, okay. we're getting there. We're getting there. For people that want to follow the Torah, you're free to do that, but you're not in the new covenant, and you can't be. So th- there, there, there's your answer. You're, you're not free, in the new. You're free to do. She's used the word free a couple times, but I don't. I'm not sure what she means by that. Well, um, ultimately, I think she she sees. I, I think what she's saying is that's your right if you want to follow the Torah, but you're not in the new covenant. I think that that's what she's saying. Okay, but but ultimately, that would mean if you're not in the new covenant, you're not saved. So anyone who wants to follow the Torah is not saved. That's interesting because I wonder what parts of the Torah she's talking about. If she's so she ma- she must be saying that if you are looking to like let's say you're you're keeping the Sabbath or dietary laws. That and and you talk about Jesus and loving Jesus. That you really are, you really don't know who Jesus is, and you're just as bad as the rest of the world that are in paganism and idolatry, and uh, you know, and atheism because the wrath of God is on everywhere outside of the new covenant. I mean, I wonder. I wonder if she thinks that like bestiality is okay then. It's not restated in the New Testament. I wonder if kidnapping is okay. Because, I mean, and that we should do those things because if we keep the, if we don't do those things, then we're keeping the law of Moses. So that would yeah, mean that I we're mean, not. That, that's that's pushing it into, uh, yeah, in the ad, ad absurdum, what do they call it, where it's just you show how absurd it is by. Yeah, but I mean, like she's saying, if you follow the law of Moses, then you're not in, in the new covenant. So does that mean that I have to kidnap yeah. someone? Does that mean I have to have relations with an animal? But the law of Moses animal? says you, that the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength and love your neighbors yourself. So how can you, <laughs> in the new covenant, have those as your priorities in life? Right. Yeah. It's, when it, they're in the Torah itself, unless, the, well, it's restated. So like you're saying, I, Jesus I, restated it. I have to believe that, 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 that she's in some kind of an echo chamber. And the reason why is because this has not been well thought out, and it doesn't sound like anyone's ever challenged her on the she basic didn't run points. It by anybody. She didn't run it by yeah. well, and if she did run it by somebody, they're just agreeing with her. Yeah, you're totally right. You you you're you're on fire here. Okay, we Go got sister. We got a little bit left. I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way through. Let's. We got one minute left. Let's let's try. This music is just awful. Because you can't be married to two people. Go read Romans. Eight, I believe. You cannot be married. She's put Romans 7 up there. So, yeah, um, you can't be married to two people. Once again, which people are we married to? It, 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 this doesn't make any sense. To two covenants. It's like when your husband dies and you go remarry someone, are you going to bring that entire covenant that you had with your spouse that was dead, you're going to bring that into a new marriage? No. <laughs> You're going to create a new covenant with that other man. So if you if you only knew who Jesus truly was, you wouldn't be going back to the Torah. We have we have to laugh. I I have to laugh. I'm I'm genuinely sad for this young lady. I'm like genuinely sad for her because I feel like she uh, like I I don't know who this lady is at all. So I I don't know, but I I feel like she ha- like she really really loves God and she really wants to share with people the truth and the, and the love that she's found in Christ and all these kind of things. 
and she is just she's being led down the primrose path of of like nonsense and she and then she's just regurgitating it up to everyone else we got 34 seconds left let's finish it out and just like the pharisees who didn't know who jesus was when he was standing right in front of them you don't know who jesus is as well because Satan has blinded your mind and blinded your eyes and the veil is still over your face. And so I would repent if you are following the Torah and trying to live under the Torah, I would repent and ask Jesus Christ to unveil the veil that's over your eyes and then search after who Jesus truly, truly is. That's the end. Um, it sounds. I mean, it, it almost sounds like Mormon doctrine in the end, right? Just pray. So search, see. search after. Is she sending people to a certain church? <laughs> like, like in other words, the church for ex uh, Torah observant. The church of like, da- the ch- church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. That's what it sounds like in the end, right? Just pray and ask God to have a burning in your bosom so that you know that it's true. It, the 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 fact is is that the way that you know something is true or not is you go to the scriptures. And so it, she would agree, obviously, she would say, if you said, well, did Jesus ever sin? She would say no. Right. And you're I, saying, I have to how, what that, is yeah. the standard by which we know? Well, because it, he fulfilled the Torah and law. That means he kept the, the command. He never transgressed the holy law. Um, did he? And, and when Jesus, he died, right? Yeah. And he he resurrected right and he ascended right um is the same spirit in messiah now in his resurrection that was perfect and never transgressed the law in the flesh when he walked around in his ministry before the crucifixion yeah and it's and so you'd say well if i'm and and then people who belong to him are heirs of of the covenantal promise to abraham yeah and his we don't have our own life but our life is is his life yeah so the same spirit that's in messiah is in us yeah i mean it's like is it a law so is there a law-breaking spirit there no uh okay wait a minute so the the spirit of messiah that's in genuine born-again believers is a spirit that never transgressed the torah i mean i I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I, it's it'd be. It was, she would have to say, well, yeah. That's I guess that's true. I guess that's true because. Um, uh, I mean, it's just the classic questions. The, the the classic questions. What do you mean by Torah observance? Can we commit adultery? Can we murder? Can we lie? Can we steal? You know, I the, think she would probably go to some research books that she has on her shelf. There's no research and books she would, on her she shelf. She would find someone who has divided the book of well, well, books of Moses into like ceremonial, civil, moral, and then she would run with that. That seems, if I were her, that would be my best move. Like if, like if I'm playing chess and I've got, I've made the moves that she's made, it's like, what's she going to do? She's going to have to come out with, there's a moral versus civil and the civil and ceremonial are done away. It's you the, know what I mean? That's her the, best move. It's the only, I, it's I, the I, only move you have because if it's, you but, say, but it's, but it's a dead end, but it's her oh, best. Yeah. It's her only move yeah. at that point. Yep. It's like, and then the next move is for, for the other side is just, is check me. Like, yeah, like you don't have any other moves after then. And it's a, not a winner. So, all right. Well, if, uh, if you agree with this young lady, please shoot us an email. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Uh, yeah, it, this is just another example too, Caleb, of when Yeshua says, you know, pray that the Lord of the harvest will <laughs> bring laborers because the, the, the laborers are few, but there's a lot of work to do. And what I see here is like, wow, you know, some of these things we've talked about a thousand times and you know what, we're going to have to talk about them at 10,000 more, you yep. know, because, because, Praise God, you know, that that he sustains those who labor in the word. And by his grace, we continue to do that and and reach people, reach people that are out there and need to just have these discernments um, so that they can question the traditions of men that have informed them to have these categories 
moral, civil, or whatever, or Old Testament being versus New Testament husband. And and they just take these categories for granted, but these categories are traditions of men. They are not in the scriptures. And that's like getting the plank out of our eye. Yep. All right. Uh, if you have a video you want to, us to look at on Mystery Bible Theater 3000, com, C-H-E-G-G-A-T-O-R-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-S-O-R-C-E-